David Query of New Zealand has been operating an unmodified generator and a welding torch on the HHO output from his 6 litres per minute own design of electrolyzer for many years now using this arrangement here. His electrolyzer has a pressure switch to turn it off and a uh, contact breaker or fuse between the battery and the electrolyzer. The output from the electrolyzer goes into a bubbler which is filled with water. The output from the bubbler is passed by a non-return valve to another bubbler which is filled with acetone rather than water. The output from that goes through a flashback arrestor and then through a gas flow control valve. There's a T-junction here which passes ordinary HHO through a flashback arrestor and through a gas flow rate control valve and then they meet a T-junction where the two outputs are mixed together and you get a gas mix which is passed on to the engine or in this case the uh, welding torch if you're going to be using a welding torch. Henry Payne's US letters patent number 308276 dated the 18th of November 1884 states that HHO gas can be converted into a more convenient gas which is much easier to handle by the simple process of bubbling it through a suitable liquid such as turpentine or linseed oil. Although unaware of Henry Payne's patent, David discovered the technique independently and he has extended the technology further so that the gas ignition speed can be set manually. One important point which David stresses is that it is essential that the HHO coming from the electrolyzer is passed through an ordinary bubbler containing water before it passes through the second bubbler containing the modifying liquid. David finds that the lighter liquid acetone works better than the liquid suggested by Henry Payne, although white spirit, carbon tetrafluoride, aviation fuel, hexane, or even petrol can be used and any of them will show will slow the flame speed right down to that of butane. If the flame is being used for a specialist task such as jewelry making or glass blowing then there may be an advantage in using one particular modifying liquid over another. Please note that the bubbler holding the acetone needs to be made of stainless steel as acetone can dissolve some plastics. David has further modified the characteristics of the output gas by adding in a percentage of the unmodified HHO gas. Although it's actually subtle and sophisticated, David's overall system is easy to understand. The ratio of the two gases is adjusted by the settings of the two control valves. Adjusting the ratio of modified HHO to unmodified HHO allows a high degree of control over the characteristics of the resulting gas mix. Added to that, David has developed an electronic control system which oversees and manages the gas flow rate according to the user's needs at any given moment. David um, therefore has a system which allows water and electricity to be the means of supplying a gas which can be used as a safe general purpose fuel. If it is used to run a generator then the system appears to become self-powered if part of the generator output is used to drive the electrolyzer. It should be possible to substitute the modified gas mix for propane or butane and so operate a wide range of existing equipment used for heating, 
cooking or lighting. David runs a 4 horse horsepower Honda generator using this system. This is a photograph of David's uh, particular generator motor. The generator runs very well for David, however I suspect that if cold water mist were introduced into the incoming air then the power output would be increased due to the mist turning into flash steam and providing greater pressure on the piston during its power stroke. Alternatively, it might be possible to match the present performance with a lesser gas flow, or possibly powering a much larger generator, if that were a requirement. It needs to be understood that David uses electronics which manages and controls the gas flow, suiting it to whatever the needs are at any given moment. Consequently, it is probable that the 6 litres per minute which David's electrolyzer can produce is not actually used for most of the time. David also does welding, brazing and cutting with the same modified electrolyzer gas mix which can provide adjustable flame heat and flame length of anything up to 2 feet in length. The torch can be used for cutting and this photograph shows it cutting panel steel to demonstrate the high flame temperature and low axial heat. It is a good idea to use a proven design with full control electronics. David can help here with detailed step-by-step -step construction plans and instructional videos. You can contact David at uh, dahq at clear.net.nz for information on what's available to help you at the present time. When using this system for welding, David uses the mains to power the electrolyzer, and the, arran the arrangement for doing that is shown here. You have the electrolyzer feeding the bubbler, flashback arrestor positioned vertically, mark you, uh, feeding gas on to a welding torch, uh, also a section going through a non-return valve into the bubbler which is filled with acetone and then to a flashback arrestor which is also vertical and the modified HHO then feeds to the welding torch which allows individual flow rates to be set on the two supplying pipes. The flashback arrestors are a sand filled design and so are mounted vertically. The gas production rate is knob controlled using this, this circuit here. This is the circuit which David uses. Uh, he has the live mains connection there, the neutral mains connection there and the mains earth connection on that pin. The first part of David Query's circuit acts very much like a dimmer light switch. The 230 volt AC mains is fed through an on-off switch and then an ordinary mains fuse. The current flow on through the circuit is blocked by the BT139 triac until it receives a pulse from the DBT, DB3 diac. So the triac is normally fed, if provided A1 switch is closed, with the pulses from the diac, which is specifically designed for triggering a triac. The, uh, the cell has a large number of plates, and so it operates off the 300 volts produced by this system. The ammeter between the diode bridge and the cell indicates the current flow and so the amount of gas being produced at any given moment. The flashback arrestors are constructed as shown here. You have a push fit nylon tube connector at both ends of the uh, uh, flashback arrestor. It's made of plastic and filled with dry sand. It has a polyfiber disc at um, one end 
and an end cap which is glued on with high pressure rated solvent. The pipe diameter is 1 inches, which is 25 millimeters. Sincere thanks are due to David for freely sharing his design and his experiences, and for his willingness to provide direct additional support and further details should they be needed.